Hi, I'm Becca Otis from Five Lines Pottery in Indianapolis, Indiana. And I'm Ryan Durbin from RD Ceramics located in Southgate, Kentucky. And welcome to Wheel Talk. Hey guys, we've loved answering all of your questions so far. If you'd like to hear your question on the podcast, please send them to us on Instagram at Wheel Talk Podcast or by email to wheeltalkpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks. All right. Did you, did you click late? I feel like you clicked I late. I started it. I'm good. I'm good. I might have clicked a little late. We're good, Becca. Okay. Uh, we're live! Hi. We are live. We're live and we're late. Well, Becca was late. Ryan was actually I was going to say, on you're time. late. Normally I'm late, so. Yeah. I forgot. Yeah, I was like, no, I'll be good. The one time I don't remind you, because we just talked about it today, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, why were you late? Uh, So, apart from the fact that I forget everything, I mixed up colored slips today, and mm. I was putting them on a plaster bat and making fun little earrings to test the colors, and I got distracted. Oh. What were you coloring the slips with? Do you have mason stains and all that, or did you yeah. use some underglazes? Or I bought some mason stains like a while ago, and um, they didn't work for what I was going to use them for, but now I'm going to use them for, like, um, earrings and, uh, like, I want to do... <sighs> Oh, starting off early. Specifically, I want to do studs. Um, stud okay, earrings. so colored studs without stroke and coat, or just right? You're just trying to, or make... maybe with stroke and coat. If I could make them so that they're like blue on the back and then green on the front, that might be fun. Okay, because yeah. right now you're just using the clay fresh and then adding stroke and coats on some of them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. So what clay were you adding it to? Because you don't... Do you have a straight white clay or are you adding them to Dark Star? So this is a funny story. So I asked Sarah to pick me up some slip from the store from Brickyard Ceramics. And mm. um, and I just wanted like wet slip. And she brought me this box and I was like... She was like, yeah, it's powdered. And I was like, I didn't want powdered. I wanted wet That's slip. That's not wet, yeah. And then I oh and I didn't open it because I wasn't like excited about it. I was like, "Fuck, I have to like mix the powder." And then I was like, "But then how is it like deflocculated and blah blah blah?" And then I opened the box today and it's fucking wet. It was just in a bag. <laughs> but you couldn't find it. You just you didn't pick the box up and you can feel that there's water there versus like dry. I did not. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just kind of like took her at her word <laughs> and it was funny cause she walked in and I was like, Sarah, this is what? And she's like, what? <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, it so like she would have known that though. I don't know. We just didn't know. Yeah, all whatever. Of it. And so it's, I guess the difference would be it's harder to mix it to the right consistency because it's liquid. Like, how do you know how much stain to put in? Cause the stain is in powder form. Do you just guess? Uh, uh, Kurt told me 10% is the max, so I put 10%. 10% of <laughs> what? Because it's dry. How do you know what the dry equivalent would be in 10%? No, because it's of... like 10, it's like 10 of the dry to the liquid. So. Okay. So you just did liquid weight versus dry to dry weight? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And we'll, we'll see if they turn out, you know, um, yeah, I'm still trying to figure out the whole slips situation. Um, I mean, the stud situation, how I want to do it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. But that's specifically what it's for. Because um, you've already kind of figured out the what you like about the hoops and the other designs. It's just the... Right, but these ones are, like, fun and, like, funky. You know, if I can figure this out, I'll be really excited. Yeah. I feel like the studs are meant to be more, like neutral or like agreed agreed subtle. i meant the i meant i meant i'm doing like these weird little hoops on the plaster so i'm like it's a flat plaster and then i'm i'm putting the slip in a hoop form and 
and then like building on top of it so it's a little bit thicker and then I did little dots of different colors. Oh, okay. So you're just designing straight with the clay. Yeah. And then letting it dry and see how they turn out. Yeah. So it should be interesting. I, you know, it's like pure fun test, you know. Mm -hmm. But also I need to get the colors of the slip anyway. So this is just a fun way to do it. Yeah. Well, part of the nice thing about the colored slip is it's not going to stick to the shelf. Yeah. So firing's a little easier, I guess, and maybe more predictable than underglaze. Like time, it, timing wise, it's probably, I don't know, maybe it's not as time effective, but. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, like slip is a completely different situation for me, but. Yeah. Okay. How are you? I'm doing well. I had a clay lines meeting tonight, board meeting. And got another kiln loaded up before that. Got a bis kiln, firing a glaze kiln. I have not moved my new L and L down to the studio yet, but I don't know. I, you got to do the whole, you know, move the where do you put the other one? You move it out. Yeah. And then you got to hook up the vent and stuff. Make sure it's sealed properly on the stand and all that so that I don't have to move it around a lot and all that stuff so yeah and then I gotta take it apart to get it down to the basement so yeah not gonna lie I was not unhappy that I didn't have to help that I don't have to help you move it yeah well it's yeah. fresh brand new out of the box so I think the uh, taking it apart putting it back together should be easier then uh, after it's been fired a few times and the things are rusted a little bit and all that good stuff, so it doesn't matter. I don't think <laughs> to I me it doesn't we'll, matter. It fucking we'll sucks, see. no matter what. <laughs> Moving a kiln is never a fun situation. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. So yeah, besides that, I've just, the in the bisque that I threw in there was a bunch of the stuff that you threw for me. Oh, nice. And we didn't talk since, I mean, we did a little bit, I guess, but Becca was here for a week, threw a bunch of stuff for me while she was here. A lot of oil bottles, mugs, and things. We didn't talk, did we talk about that the other day? I don't think we did. A little bit, yeah. We started bit, with that, yeah. I think, yeah. 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 So that was good. It was nice to get restocked on some, not restocked, I just, it feels much better when I've got plenty of stock of things. And I did get a... Wholesale order recently for 30 oil bottles, so. Oh, bottles nice. Nice. I'm glad I threw the wrong ones. <laughs> what? Yeah. I was looking at, so they were completely bone dry by now when I threw them in there. And I was looking at the opening. Some of them, I'm like, those are going to be too big. Those are going to be too big. That was, there's like a couple that are too small and like maybe three or four that are too big. But I swear to God, I checked every single one. Maybe I didn't check one. But, um, yeah, uh, it's a tight, it's close. Like, yeah, we'll yeah, see. we'll see how they turn out. Even if they're a little and, big, it'll be fun. And Ryan's like, oh, it's this big. And then I'm like, okay. And he's like, no, 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 it's not that big. It's this big. And I'm like, you just see it with your eyes. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, well, cause I can look at a board of 20 of them and be like, that one's too big and that one's too big. And that yeah. one's too small. Just because I've made hundreds of them, so I figure out what works now. But yeah, but they all looked really good. Like you got them taller than I normally do, so yeah. you got that. You got that going for you for sure. Looking good. I threw my first uh, twenty-five cups today. Of I saw my... you had some new forms. What's what's that about? What's the Oh, yeah. Well, I'm of the belief that I think that you should at least spice it up a little bit with your products every year. Not only for you, but for your customers. Um, you know, like something new at least once a year. Okay. So This isn't a desperation choice. No, 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 no. No, I was just, I thought it would be fun. I mean, I've been rolling with the wine glass shape for a while, and I thought, and I... 
I was using a cup recently and I was like, wow, I really love the shape of this and the size. And it was like a tall boy, but it was a shorter, like a smaller tall boy. And mm -hmm. not tall boy. Uh, like a cocktail ball, glass? Sorry. A highball, yeah. Highball like glass, a, yeah. Yeah, like a highball cocktail glass. And for those who don't know, highball and lowballs are, um, it's essentially like those short cocktail glasses and then the really tall ones that are a little bit skinnier. Well, they don't really have to be skinny, but it's essentially a single and a double. So, um... They kind of hold the same thing. Well, it depends on what where you're drinking, yeah. it, I guess. Yeah, but... So, I was like, it would be really nice to just have a... Like, a cylinder. You know? Just like a nice fucking cylinder. And, um... So, I You made those I did... tall ones with the fancy cups a couple years ago, but they were dented... They weren't yeah. really this. They were tumblers, but they weren't exactly. They were like fucking. Yeah, those are big. Those are like 16 to 20 ounces. These ones will not be big. These will be like eight ounces. So, um, yeah. So, oh, the tall one's only eight ounces. Mm hmm. Oh. So it's like a smaller cup, but it's like a. It's like what you would put like a fancy ice cube in and like have. A martini in or whatever. Not a martini because you put those You'd have a, glasses, but... a tiki, like a... Yeah, like a tiki drink or whatever. Yeah. Like a uh, tequila sunrise or something in it. Yeah. A... Yeah, exactly. So, I like Margarito the size. I think it'll be like five and a half inches tall. I like the size and I'm excited because it's a little bit more of a simple shape, but I think that there's a lot of potential... For design. And you're using that as a canvas for your fancy cups? Or yeah. is it just those? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that'll the, give you some different uh, scenes yeah. to play with because it's less real estate. It, the tall glass, for sure. Yeah. It's more in the round, so you can really play around with the options there. Yeah, so... I Yeah, I've been thinking about it for the last couple of weeks, and I'm pretty stoked that... I mean, it's so weird when... You know, it's so weird that, like... It takes such a a long time to think about a cylinder and like how you want that cylinder to look like, you know? Yeah, because it's just like just throw a fucking cylinder. And right. Trim it. Exactly. But it's not that simple. Like people that go through making things look simple. Yeah, it's just like. And Merritt was like, you know, it's really hard to throw like just a nice fucking cylinder, like a straight ass cylinder. And I think it is. And I want it to be more of like a glass. Like where you look at it and you're like, that doesn't seem like it's pottery. You know? Mm -hmm. Like that seems like it should be glass. So that's kind of what I want it to feel like. Yeah, because there's no, there's no room for error. With such a None. simple shape, you notice. Yeah. Like if it's subtly going inward instead of vertical, like right. you can notice that. Yeah, if you notice a little, it. If there's a little bulge in there. Yeah. You can't necessarily trim out a little bulge. Like, it won't look perfect. Right. It has to be perfect. And I kind of love that about it. So, we'll see. We'll see if people like them. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, besides that, just making some stuff. I don't... I'm trying to think of anything else is new over here. Not really. I've, I've got the wheel is getting fixed actually the wheel got fixed i need to get it tomorrow oh tell us about that tell us about how, i like, mean i don't know you tell us about it how did, what happened oh they didn't tell you what was wrong with it oh i thought did you talk about it on here like what happened with the wheel well i said that i broke it that was it uh they just ended up getting a new uh i don't know if it was a circuit board it was the it was the board for my box, so I want to say it was a two hundred dollar circuit board kind of thing. Okay, so it was two hundred dollars. Yeah, it was a. It was the D thirty, one ten volt, board for that box. Yeah. So, and then it sounded like that was it. They thought Ben was gonna have to fix it because he was on vacation, but John fixed it for me. So, okay. I'll see it tomorrow, and I'll I'll confirm like exactly what they had to do. And also but, confirm if I broke it or if it was going to be broken. I mean, it, it the wheel's from 1994. I don't know what sparks those things to break, but... 
Yeah. I could always ask. I could always ask John and find out if. Because I mean, I can pay you for it if I was the one that broke it. <laughs> I mean, they could also be like, we don't know exactly, but this is like a thing that could break. Yeah. I mean, they probably do know. They could probably put the circuit things on it and see if there's a charge or not. And yeah. You know, swap it out with another one that they have and see if it works. If that yeah. works, then it's like okay, then it's fixed. Yeah. Nice. And the fuse got replaced too since you got that. So. Yep. Yeah. So we'll we'll get it tomorrow and we'll see. Uh, should be back in business. So. Nice. It's been weird seeing the. I mean, I didn't clean the floor in that area, so it looks a little cleaner in the studio. But. Yeah. It is a little weird not having that wheel in there. You know what I was thinking today? Because I really, 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 really hate trimming on my uh, current Soldner. Just because... um, Not because of the wheel, but because all the trimmings get, like, under the wheel and on top of the wheel. And you can't, like, go from wet to dry to wet to dry to wet to dry. Is there not a splash pan with that Soldner? No. So, um... I mean, there is. I hate that. Well... I could have bought a splash pan. I just told them no. And the splash pan's a lot different than like a normal splash pan. It wouldn't catch any trimmings anyway. So Okay. And you um, have your Giffen grip on there. Yeah, I and and I have the Giffen grip on there, blah blah blah. So, um But I was Don't tell like me you're going to buy another wheel. No, I have 3. Like <laughs> don't need another wheel uh no i was just thinking that i have my portable wheel in the van here and it'd be nice to just like put it in a rubbermaid box and mm-hmm. trim in it with the because now i have the give and grip mini i can trim on the mini and then i don't have to worry about like the trimmings going all over the floor yeah as long as you don't have to like t-rex arm it in there to like make sure that you can right yeah trim it inside sure. the box somehow yeah so, yeah, I you almost just... have to have a like certain wheels have good splash pan. Like Brent's got a good splash pan that catches a lot of shit. Yeah. Like Shimpo's have pretty good splash pans. Pacificos, most, I think, actually, have an okay one. Actually, most wheels have good splash pans. The <laughs> the 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 uh, Soldners just happen to be the ones that don't. <laughs> like. Yeah, I. It just seems, like, when I see people trim and they just don't have a splash pan and they just get the shit everywhere, it just, I'm like, oh my gosh, that seems horrible. It's really infuriating. What I do... you can't clean it up that well unless you can move your wheel completely out of the way. Sweep yeah. it. What I, mean, I do... You don't really want to be sweeping, but... Yeah, what I do on the top is that I actually have a piece of cardboard that I rigged to sit right on the wheel. But, okay. Babs. There's Babs. Please, please move. <laughs> um, so I have a car- piece of cardboard that sits on top of the wheel. So anything that would go out to the wall gets caught by that piece of cardboard. I just... No, stop. You don't need to go... Stop. You bitch. Um, <laughs> uh, but I just have... Uh, I don't have anything for the floor. So anything that comes back at me goes on the floor and then i just sweep it up it's just really fucking annoying yeah and I you almost it. need little can you have little uh binder clips on the sides of it to binder clip a cardboard bo- cardboard along the boundary so it can kind of act as a catch oh that's what i have on that's what i have on that but just on the floor part like oh okay from my my stomach to the wheel. That's the part that's not. Oh, yeah. I gotcha. So you kind of yeah. catch it. Yeah. So. Hmm. Yeah. It is what it is, though. You know. What are you gonna How do? Have you been? Have you been getting the studio right now in Indy? Because you've been in there for about a week now, or maybe less than a week. But. Yeah, I um I pussed around for like three days. And did nothing. And then finally th- threw 25 pieces today and decided that that was enough. Um, <laughs> I was, my plan, though, my current plan is to throw 50 pieces, trim 50 pieces in a day. Um, and that should 
get me to, and give or take 50, but that should get me to 500. Give or take 50? What does that mean? You either don't do 50 or you do do 50? No. Uh, like sometimes, like today I messed up on two, so I got 24. Um, oh, I got gotcha. you. There's 26 okay. balls of clay to a bag. So two bags is happening a day. So, gotcha. okay. Um, so I figure if I do 50 a day and trim 50 a day, I should get to 500 or whatever my goal is um, pretty quickly, you know? Yeah. Next couple of weeks. So. Given that you ramp up that time and you don't lose another two or three days like you have, but you were kind of experimenting too, so. Yeah, but I'm also not in a rush, you know? Yeah. Which is a nice feeling. So. Sweet. Yeah, and I've been selling some things on Etsy. Wee. More earrings? Yeah, well, and fidget stones, so wee. <laughs> That's Did good. you have fidget stones? Yeah. Oh, you still had some. Okay. I know you, well, you just bisque them. Did you fire a bunch already? I just fired a bunch that were black. I should have saved more than I had, but I did save a few because, of course, everybody that ordered ordered, like, blue and pink. So. Oh, you're saying from the ones you gave out at Clay Con at uh, Inseca? Or you had more besides those? I had more back home that didn't have any dots on them. Oh, okay. So you just so had just to glaze them, them and fire them and then yeah. the batch that you took from here. You haven't finished those yet, have you? Any of those tests? I'm firing um, two tumbles worth for their glaze firing today. Oh, okay. Yeah, I want to see what they look like. Yeah. Um, the the gray ones in bisque look really cool. And it turns out that we're going to kind of talk about this today, but it turns out that it only takes a day to tumble at mm -hmm. bisque. So that's really good. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So that's okay. that's really good news. Um, yeah. What are we going to talk about today, Ryan? Well, we have a few things that we're talking about. Yeah. Let's do this first listener question. So this one is from Upbeat.Studios. I didn't look at their profile, but okay. So it reads, hello. I listen to you guys so much that I feel like I know you. Anyways, I'm wondering what you guys would recommend for a portable wheel. I heard Becca talk about her, uh, hers on ClayCon West podcast, and I'm pretty sure I saw that Ryan has one as well. Would love y'all's insight. Thanks for all you guys do to make this info accessible. Upbeat.studios. All right. I think we both have the same exact wheel. So, yeah. which kind is it? Uh, we both have a Shimpo Aspire, but the only other portable wheel on the market is there's a there's one uh, there's one other one too besides the one you're thinking of oh you're right there is one other one um the only one that that seems to be uh well anyway the speedball artista is the second one and then there's another one called the cork wheel yep i do not have experience with a cork wheel yeah that one's supposedly a battery they have different options they've got a battery powered one they've got one that plugs into a cigarette outlet they've got one that plugs into the wall there's like adapters it's got a bluetooth pedal that you can use yeah so it's meant to be like a portable wheel that's not needed to be plugged into electrical which would be really nice for like what i'm doing right now but yeah i don't i don't know it was a it was a Kickstarter kind of deal. Yeah. So I don't know if that, you know, if they're still on version one or if they're up to the next version that's, you know, a little better. But I would, anything Bluetooth, I'm a little iffy with. Like, I don't want to rely on something like that with a wheel. Yeah. I just feel like there's potential for issues. Um, like, I don't want to go on a plane with Bluetooth headphones. Like, I'd much rather have a wired set for something that I want reliability on versus yeah. something that I'm like, uh, I don't know. So, I feel like a wheel is a little bit. But have you used it's the... It's five... It's... Uh, just so the... you guys know, the Quark S Plus, whatever that means, is 499, 449 and the Quark Lit 
is nine forty nine. Holy shit, that's expensive. Nine forty nine. Yeah, and it's got a three year warranty. Learn more. Let's learn more. <laughs> Why is this oh nine hundred and forty nine dollars? Um, is it gonna center the clay for you? There's a pink one. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. The pink um, one was the cheapest one when they were doing their Kickstarter, I think. Little pink is eight ninety. Why is the pink price less? Uh, th- pottery wherever you are. Blah blah blah. It looks like this one, the one that has the um, that's really expensive. I believe has the battery pack. The battery is what you're paying for. That's so expensive. It's like a huge. It's it's like a big power charger that you're. Yeah. It's huge. Like, I mean, it's the size of like. Does it say how many mahs it it is or whatnot? So I don't know what that is. But it has it's eight to ten hours endurance. The battery and the charging time is ninety minutes. Uh, The centering capacity is twenty five pounds of clay, and it's two hundred and fifty watts. So. The S plus. It's only seven pounds, though. That does not seem like it would. That's stressful. It looks like a small wheelhead, too. It looks like it's about the size of a a spire wheelhead. So it does. But I I have heard. I think I saw that you can actually put a gif and grip on it. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense because you can put the GIF and Grip Mini on the. No, you can put a regular size GIF and Grip on this. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so what do you want to say about the Shimpo Aspire? And then we'll oh, yeah, that. sorry. Anyway, the cork is there. Uh, we don't know how it works, but they do have a pink one, so there is that. Um, <laughs> so uh, the Shimpo Aspire is has a smaller wheel head and the thing that i hate the most about it is that it has particular bats that can fit to it but you can't fit like regular bats on it yeah you have to get like dirty girl pottery tools they sell bats that are shimpo aspire related yeah or that are compatible i want to say the so the, the normal bat pins are what 10 inches apart yeah and those ones are like seven or something yeah, so even if you have, you know, you might have those speedball bats that have the inner pins and the outer pins, like spots, like those aren't going to fit. You have to have bats that are special for that. So if you look out on Dirty Girl Pottery Tools, occasionally they have a second sale. Yeah, and those are Where they it. have discounted bats, and usually they fit perfectly. They might be a little too snug, but they sell them at a discount, and I've got... I've, that's how I've got my speed, my Shimpo Aspire bats from them. I've probably got 10 or 12 now. I almost never use the bats or yeah. almost never use the Shimpo Aspire, but I've got like 10 or 12 bats up for it now because there's no other bats that I have looked into to get for it. Yeah. And what is interesting? Well, what? Okay. Also, what, what I've about, done. What do you have on yours? Do you have the hand thing for the speed? I have the hand crank, but that's kind of, I like it. I like the hand crank. Um, you have the pedal. I have the pedal because I got mine used with the pedal. So. Yeah. I also got mine used, um, but it had the hand crank, so you don't really have a choice. Um, it is... Oh, oh. also what I was going to say is that if you are a bat user, like um, a significant bat user, and you're like using this wheel all the time, what I also have done is just put a piece of clay down on the inner spokes and then just put bats on and off of it. Like, you know, just use the clay to hold the bats down. On the so. inner spokes. So, like, if you took the bat off, it's got this weird little wheel head that you know for sure is not supposed to have clay on it. I've put it on that wheel head um, between the bat pins. Oh, I gotcha. You put a, yeah. pl- a patty of clay that's thick enough yeah. to where it's not going to... Yeah. It's not going to hit the pins that are in there. Because I don't... Yeah. Are the pins removable? I don't know. I don't think they are. So, let me look don't up the price of the Shimpo Aspire. Babs, you really need to figure out your shit. Like, are you staying or are you going? <laughs> okay. 
Her cats are... I don't know what her cats are doing over there. Okay, so it looks like the Shimpo Aspire is... Um, <laughs> is like 570. It looks like Bailey Pottery has it for 540. The ceramic shop has it for 540. So uh as far as quark is concerned, I would get the aspire over quark any day of the week. Um Okay. Yeah, Babs is like, I don't know what the fuck she's doing over there. Yeah. Um and then uh, I I like the I like the Aspire. I don't use it very frequently. Uh, I got it used because it was a good price, and I was going to use it at demos for art shows. Not yeah. really art shows, but at the farmers market that I sell at occasionally. They they were like, "Hey, do you want to demo something?" And I ended up bringing my wheel a couple times, and I was like, "I wish I had a." wheel that was not so bulky so that's when i got it but uh i haven't done that at shows anymore but it's nice to have occasionally i will take it outside on the patio during nice days and i'll throw a bunch of stuff on it without having to like move my brands outside because i can't pick that up by myself at least not safely so uh it is nice for that i put it on top of a table or whatever and throw on it it's really lightweight I'd say it's good for stuff like five pounds and under for the most part. Yeah. Sorry, I just hit the mic. That was me. Um, yeah, definitely. It Actually, so the Aspire does, it's weighted up to 25 pounds. So you can throw an entire block of clay on it. However, I would not recommend it. <laughs> um, if you did that, you definitely want it to be backed up against a wall or something. Yeah, that'd be a little risky. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's talk about the Speedball Artista. The Arti yeah, so... Artista, yeah. Um, so that one's similar. Are you looking at the price on another site? I found it on there. Yeah, it's five nineteen on speed On Speedball's site. Yeah, Speedball has it on their website at... 559 standard and then there's a factory inspect used at 385. Oh fuck yeah, that's nice. Factory inspected used. So, those are out of stock on their website, but I want to say Clay King probably has some and wherever you it, just said ceramic shop. Uh yeah, the ceramic the ceramic store has it for 519. Okay. So, and what yeah, I, I mean, like Yeah, that sounds like a lot of money, but that that's like that's like the baseline for yeah. professional wheel, like well-known brands wheels. Right. So. And what I like about the Artista, and I think that, I mean, like, I got the Shimpo because it was used. It was kind of like I could have, I would have gone for either. Um, what I like about the Artista is they do make legs if you want to put legs on it. And like a stand, and also you can fit a regular size bat on it, and that's like winner yeah, winner chicken dinner. Point. Like that's the biggest selling point, really. I will say, um, the Aspire has a knob that's easy to like turn up and down if you're doing it by the hand, and the Artista only has like a small little turny knob, like. It would be the difference between... You can a, attach a wheel pedal to it if you want. You can, but if you're doing, like, the hand, like, you know... Um, the reason I like the Shimpo hand one is because it's, like, a lever, you know, like, mm -hmm. on a slot machine. And uh, the Artista's is, like, a knob, like, on a an oven. So that's a little annoying. Yeah. But, yeah, the... And then the wheel head on the Artista is... I want to say it's not it's not metal. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think of what material it is. It's like fiberglass. 11 it's a 11 inch wheel head. Yeah, it's kind 
it's kind of like a compact, yeah, like a hard plastic, but it's it's more durable. Yeah. And both of the splash pans do come off. Mm -hmm. The Artista um, has a more significant splash pan because it is a bigger wheel head, so yeah, it can catch more than the... The Aspire is just so sleek and small that, like, it's weird. You take the the wheel, uh, the bat off, and then the wheel head is so small, and then the splash pan, like, twists, like, a quarter yeah. turn, and then it, it comes up over top of the splash, over the wheel head. So it's a single-piece splash pan. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Okay, now that we've talked about the three viable options, uh actually two and a half viable options um <laughs> what would you choose if you were gonna like throw full time mm. not full time but i mean like you know what i'm saying i mean for me the way i throw i would need the speedball that had access to use a full-size bat okay um honestly, and it's got a significant wheel slash pan that would work with yeah. What I would do. If I was buying it again, I think that I would probably also go with the Artista. So, but... I would definitely want the, the pedal, though. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. But also, I will say that I'm 100% not upset with my Shimpo. I would say yeah. that I'd probably get the Artista just because I can put actual bats on it, but... The Shimpo's pretty great, and I wonder if you could actually, like, make a bat that's got a bat on top of a bat. It just sounds a little, yeah. I mean, it's a little hacky, but you can't change the splash paint on it. You'd probably have yeah. to take the splash paint off to make it work, and yeah. then what are you working with? You know, you got yeah. a lot of mess. For sure. It, it feel, And it feels like the... Also, because the Shimpo is so small, it feels so compact that that little block area that's in front of you where the motor is, like if you had a regular size uh, bat, it could become obstructive. Yeah. Especially if you try to make like a bowl that's wide or whatever, it could potentially limit what you're trying to make but oh that should be stated too is that actually both of them have like a little domey thing like it's a taller piece on the wheel so you can't make anything that wide so keep that in mind i would say the artista is a little bit better for that um if you're looking at well like yeah it's width. got a big the bigger wheel head and yeah that has a little more clearance to it yeah but yeah, the Aspire with foot pedal on Ceramic Shop 605. Yeah. that Their pedals are good, though. So They are? Yeah, I got my, my pedal. I, I It's a it's like regular Shimpo pedal, so it's like, if you've ever used those pedals, I've Oh, the good. Aspire pedal. I thought you said the Aspire the pedal, speed yeah. Ball. I, I hate speedball pedals. I like... It's a little tight, but you could probably... Yeah. I've never used a new one, but I got that... I got that Aspire with the pedal for like three hundred dollars, I think. And yeah, it was barely even used. Same, same. I think I bought mine for three fifty, and the lady like was like, "I'm gonna do pottery," and then like tried it twice and was like, "No," and uh, she used it twice. It's like great. Yeah, it's in great shape. Um. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. That was good. Uh, so, and what you're doing in your vehicle now, like, that, the, the Aspire is working just fine when you, you need it? Or do you not really use it at all right now? Honestly, I haven't even used it. And I I will be using it, though, because now I have the um, the the mini... Uh, Giffen Grip? Yes. The mini Giffen Grip, I will be using it because of that. Um, but, like, it it... I didn't throw anything that wasn't in a studio while I was out. And I mean, that might change, but I'm hoping that the way I do everything is that I'll throw everything first. And then... Well, I mean, you're yeah, you're hoping to be able to throw everything on your soldner so you don't have to throw on the road and you're right. just decorating on the road. I'm right? just decorating and sanding on the road. So now that I literally, 
it all stemmed from getting one of those stupid gif and grip minis there you go finding the right tool at the right situation is like yeah it's like a necessary evil and i hate it <laughs> the so, gif and grip yes i was using it today and the one that i have up in the studio is like kind of old but i was like god fucking damn it i fucking hate this thing <laughs> <laughs> like it was just uh <laughs> it's so annoying sometimes but it's like it's so useful and i hate that there you go yeah i've almost never used a gif and grip maybe for 10 minutes or something yeah so i don't understand why my cat just can't stay still like, yeah, Lloyd... I mean, what the fuck? She's walked <laughs> across her keyboard like five times. I don't understand it. I don't get it. Like, Lloyd is literally sleeping. <laughs> like, he's just sleeping in the cat bed behind. And I have this cat bed that she refuses to sleep in because she's a fucking bitch. And not really. Babs is the nicest cat in the world. But, like, she just keeps walking across my keyboard like she's bored. I'm like, come on. Yeah, figure it out, Babs. Yeah, God. Babaruski. Babaroni. Little Miss Babble. Hey, ba Babaroni. <laughs> I call her Miss Babble. And then my friends call her Miss Sniffles. <laughs> Miss Sniffles. Yeah, because she's got a sniffle. Um, nice. I feel like there was news I had. Oh, no, I'll figure, I'll figure it out. What? No, I just remember what it was, but we'll talk about it later. Maybe okay. it'll be on a separate thing we'll talk about later. Okay. Um. Do you want to ask the next question? I would like to ask the next question, but I feel like we should talk about um, this adventure that I've been having with my friends recently. So. Oh, gosh. Yeah, let's hear this. They have... Intermission time, folks. <laughs> intermission, but intermission with an ad. Um, <laughs> they have, a, an old L and L kiln that came from Joshua Heim. Thank you, Joshua Heim. And through Rebecca Graves. And, um, it is actually in a lot better shape than I remember it being. And the channels are still intact. The, the fucking elements look great, but they are old and worn. So, um, mm -hmm. the, the elements look great. The, Did you figure out how old the kiln was? Or the number of firings or anything like that? The firings, there's 350 firings on it. Oh, that's not too bad. Yeah, I don't think that's too bad. And um, I want to say, I think it was in 97. Because the serial number has a 97 at the end. And mm. so I was like, maybe it's 1997? I don't know. I'm um, sure Dimitri could tell you how they serial number it right so i sent him the i sent him the um oh my god she's sitting in the bed she's sitting in the bed all right don't look at her she might change okay sorry um so i oh she rejected you reach out it. to you reach okay. out to dimitri I'm... about the kiln yeah and i've never uh changed elements for an L, &L kiln so i reached out to him and we're going to do a little video and I'm going to change out the elements in this kiln and it's old as shit, but I think that'll be a pretty good testament and we'll see how easy it is. So, um, to change these, these elements out and I'm really excited. I've never been excited about changing elements out before. So sweet. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know. If they have those cool, like, and it, so it's got the zone control still. I think that's crazy that the, even the old L and L kilns have the zone control still. Like. So are they like the one kiln that I have with the completely covered? No. Tubes They're, or how is it controlled? It's, um, controlled from three thermocouples, but they're not, they're not covered. So they're, um, just regular thermocouples. Um. Oh, so they're not inside of porcelain at all? No. And I mean, this, this motherfucker's old. This is or an orange 
kiln. This is when their colors were orange. Oh my gosh! Wow. <laughs> so, but it looks, but the shell of it looks similar, or uh, no? no? It's or completely orange on the outside. Yeah, like, and it's old. Like, no, it's like a silver shell, but like the box is orange and everything like that. So it's like old, old. Oh. So wow. yeah, I'm really excited, and I'm excited to report back on how easy it is to change out these stupid elements because, um. I've only ever had kilns that that you had to, like, bend the pin and, like, stick it in and, like, you know, uh -huh. oh, they're terrible, absolutely horrible. Um, so, yeah. but in other news, uh, my favorite thing about the newest L&L kiln that Ryan got is in is the thermocouples because they are uh, covered by, like, a nice little porcelain tube so the black stuff doesn't come out and and kind of like go yeah, over the kiln. Yeah, I had some of that flake off of my my other kiln. That yeah. It's got a big fucking thermocouple. The the Olympic one has like a 2-inch thermocouple sticking out and it's a yeah. it's just it's a pretty big one compared to the L&L &L and the Scuts that are just little bitty wires that are yeah. I don't know, maybe a, a quarter of an inch thick or something. The Olympic one's like a three-eighths of an inch or half-inch thick. And Holy it, shit. The, it, it flakes off. So that's like, hey, I need to replace this. But but yeah, that doesn't get there. It happened with the L&L because it just, the porcelain tubes hold it in there. Also, another thing that I noticed that I really, really loved about the L&L when they were on like display it in Sika is that so for instance my um cone art the box when you have to like replace the thermocouple or replace the um replace anything inside the box it opens up towards the left side so like but the way that it's positioned, it's right next to the wall. So I have to like shimmy into the wall to open up the kiln. And the new LNLs, and I think actually most LNLs, actually pull straight out. And so you don't have to like be on the left or the right side of the kiln. You can be on whatever side and it just pulls out. And does that make sense? My, it, yeah. My, so mine, to get to the elements, you have to swing it out to the left. Yes. But it can come completely off. But if you need to get to the electrical portions that are not the elements, you yeah. can unscrew it and it flips downward. Yeah. Which is what they had open at, at Enseca, where it's got all the plugs and it's got like the spine of the different connections and stuff. Yeah. And I think that is so cool because I'm sure anybody that has a kiln that's next to a wall can attest. It is a pain in the ass to like kind of like sneak in there and then open it up. If it's the wrong, swinging the yeah. wrong way, you know? Or if you have kilns next to each other. Yeah, it's such a pain. So I thought that was a really cool thing. Nice. Yeah, that'll be cool to see because I haven't seen that old of a kiln, but it sounds like the insides are pretty much the same. Yeah. Yeah, they're, I mean, I figure, I asked for, we asked for some, um, I think we're going to buy some thermocouples and some relays just like replace everything and make it a brand new fucking kiln on the inside nice. you know except for the box um, do they have a retrofit thermocouple covers for the older style or you'd have to drill a bigger hole in the side to make that work i think you'd have to drill a bigger hole okay i don't know for sure but um but yeah oh it is new enough to be electric by the way so to like what have a mean? box not it's not a kiln oh, sitter it's got a controller yeah yeah so nice. whatever that means how old it is but yeah so um where would you go and buy a brand new kiln ryan well you'd look at the kiln options see all the new ones genesis controllers new L, &L controllers at hotkilns.com where at hotkilns.com that's what we're going with right now. Hawkins.com. Hawkins.com. Okay. <laughs> uh, great. Okay, what's our next question? <laughs> All right, this one's toward Becca. It reads from mostly underscore mugs. Curious to know how Becca's firebox is working out for her. 
now that it's been a bit. Could a firebox be a good workaround solution for a potter who doesn't have convenient access to a full-size kiln? Getting desperate and tired of driving 84 miles round trip to, a f to fire at a local store. I only make food safe cups, mugs, soup bowl, uh, small bowls, spoon rests. So, firebox. Okay, um, what I can say for sure is that th this tiny ass kiln is the best investment I've ever made as far as pottery is concerned. Um, it's fucking great. I would love, love, love is it. Is it skewed because of the things you're making? Though? Yes, but I'm, I was going to preface it with that. It's the best okay. investment I've ever had. However, I can only fit something that is four inches tall inside of it. So that means that these new cups that I have that are going to be five inches tall are out. I can bisque them in it, but I cannot glaze fire them in it. Um, so if you are firing and only things that are four inches not tall, then it's fine. Um, and so the interior dimensions of the kiln is eight inches by eight inches by four and a quarter, I think. And that's with no shelves in it. Um, not only that, when you're firing it to, with like cups and stuff, you have to hold a certain amount because it is so tiny. You have to make sure that it's hitting the temperature that it actually applies to. Now I'm doing jewelry and also like not bisque firings. Oh, well, yeah. Like bisque firings and glaze firings for the, like the fancy cups. So the glaze firings are what I'm more concerned about. And I've kind of figured out that I have to fire to cone six if I want to get a five. Um, but it's, I fucking love it. And also I did talk to Dimitri about it. And I think that they might be working on a little portable kiln, like a 110. Yeah. They're trying, I think they're trying to find something that works with that 110 outlet. Like you, like your firebox. Yeah. And so, um, so keep that in mind if you're, you know, in the future anyway, but, um, let's say they're making spoon rests the size of my spoon rests. How many of those could you fit realistically in that kiln for glaze? For a glaze? Two. Two. Maybe three. Maybe three. The problem is, and I, okay, so you could potentially fit it in, but like you would have to, like, I think that you'd have to, like, fire it on, uh, like, cone There's... six tiles because those are a lot thinner. Um, you're not even... Oh. It's... So use a tile like a, like a shelf? Yeah, you'd have to use, like, a tile like a shelf because they're a little bit thinner. The shelves that it come... It only comes with one shelf when you get the kiln, but it's, like, almost three-fourths of an inch, and it's... <laughs> <laughs> like the biggest waste of space on the planet. That's why I'm going to get some I'm going to get some advancer shelves for it because they're thinner and um yeah. will work better for what I'm doing. 4 inches. So 4 inches tall and it's touching the top of the kiln. That's how deep the whole thing is. Well, it's like four and a half if if there's four no shelf inches. on the bottom. And most of the oh time I fire with no shelf on the bottom. Like if I'm just I couldn't even imagine. That's not even a mug like yeah, so I can fit four fancy cups in there, and they barely fit, but they fit. Um, like your tall tumblers, you would not be able to glaze fire a tall tumbler in there? No, I won't be able to glaze fire a tall tumbler. No. Fuck. So, Is that a concern for you? No. I'll just do them all at once here. <laughs> like, that's fine. Okay. But, um, but, like, what... Sarah also loves it. Sarah Anderson, who's my studio mate, like, you know, sometimes she has to, like, refire one cup, and she uses it to refire one cup. Honestly, I wouldn't say that it's the best for a person that it's their only kiln, but it would be fucking great for anybody that's doing that has a huge kiln <laughs> and, like, may need to test fire. But um, also... What I will say 
is that I don't know. Did our question talk about voltage or like did they they can't have one because of? No, they're in California though. I don't. Okay. Well, what I will say is that uh, I think that. So Scott has one that's one size bigger, and it does have a 220 plug, but I'm sure it's, like, minimal. And uh, uh, that one would probably be the best solution for somebody in this situation. Because then you could fire just a few more. But it's still, like, it's probably, I don't know how big it is, but it, it's, I think it's, like like, a foot square, maybe. Um, I feel like you could work with a foot. Yeah, you can work a with a deep. foot. Yeah. You could fit, yeah, I mean, if you could fit like 10 pieces in there, that'd be nice. But talking like two or three pieces, that just sounds inefficient to me. Yeah. If you're making, for, if I, I don't even want to say the word production, but if you're making wheel thrown work and you're selling it at a show. Yeah. The quantity you need just doesn't sound efficient. I'm assuming selling it a show, but if you're doing a restock with 30 pieces, like how many firings would you have to do to get those 30 pieces ready for the restock? Like, yeah. So I have the Firebox 8x4 LT. Um, the uh, Firebox 8x6 LT. I'm pretty sure that's only a cone six. If you were, if, okay, if you were, like, had to transport up, up and down, you know, like, if you're driving that far, this might be a good solution, actually, because, um, why doesn't it say, fucking Scott, like, just say what temp it goes to. Like, are you fucking kidding me? What about if you just got it to Biscuit? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, if you just got the 8x6, which I'm pretty sure is just a cone 6 kiln, you could bisk in that, and it would be perfect. And it's and it's a um, 10, 110 volt. So that one would be the one that I would recommend if you want to bisk um, in something and you need the that height. Would, that would be nice, because I, I feel like you could get... You would cut out the risk of breaking stuff on the way. Yeah. Because transporting greenware is the worst, especially... 80 you know 42 miles there yeah that sounds horrible and then you got to drive there drop the stuff get it fired and okay then drive there again to pick it up like yeah so here's our other option so that's like eight inches by six inches but there is another one called the km 614 and that was at um that was actually at uh the tilted kiln when oh. we were there and, okay, so there's two other ones. The Glaze Tech and the KM614. The Glaze Tech goes to cone 10. And it's, a like, a perfect little test kiln. And it's tiny. It is it, uh, trying to run on... It's 120 volts instead of 240 volts. So, um... That's just a regular plug. No, it's not. 120 volt? I think it's the plug 100. with the sideways. Okay. Well, 120 volt is a typical outlet. I mean, obviously you wouldn't want to run 120 on exactly 120 because it probably short it. But 110 yeah. volt is typically what they would say. Yeah. So I think it's just like a little different of an of an outlet, but it's still 100 120. And then this one, this is a KM614. And I believe this one is also a six cone six, um, and it ha you can put like shelves in it actually, and it has like height. But of course, because their fucking website sucks, I can't. There we go. Um, <laughs> this is a hundred and fifteen volt, and it's twenty amps. Uh, it goes to cone six. So, like, in a pinch, you could fire it to cone sense six. I wouldn't, but you could, you know. Um, it's 13 inches deep and 11 inches wide. So, that's a good... If you wanted something that was, like, in the middle and you wanted a small kiln that you could throw in that corner of your kitchen 
and use it does use a special plug it's the one that's like up it's the winky face plug <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> the one that's like up and then the the sideways and then the little nose mouth mm-hmm. thing um that would be a really I would good... suspect I would suspect the limitation with the plug situation yeah let's just say okay you got to drive to and from and maybe you rent a place yeah so, so I think you, can, you could... or you live in an apartment like you can't have a kiln at your house yeah or you can but it's a 120 volt so maybe you can get away with it yeah I think that 614 would work you know okay. um I think you just have to change out the plug and maybe it's like a specific fuse or something I don't know I'm trying I'm looking at the L&L the base the base L&L 120 volt it's got the the easy fire on it nine inch high nine inch wide yeah that's half not a bad. cubic foot that's a doll test kiln is what it says yeah that's what they usually are and then, i mean you and could it's fit a 120 volt you you could fit nine good size cups in there you know yeah I mean that it's not cheap, but it's like listed on their site at eighteen hundred bucks. That's a cone five though, so Yeah. The yeah. uh I believe the six fourteen was like sixteen or seventeen hundred, so I think that's pretty standard price for what you're gonna get. Okay. But my firebox was nine hundred and I believe that the other firebox, the one that's the eight by six is also nine hundred. It might be a thousand. So Okay. Yeah, I think that's what Dimitri said the limitation was. The only one that they have similar to it, 110 volt, is a cone 5 kiln. So maybe yeah. he was talking to you about a cone 10 option they're trying to figure out. Yeah. Yeah, and, like, they use a solid state dry. They use a solid state relay in the Scut firebox. It costs, like, $85 for this fucking relay. <laughs> like, it's... Well, actually, there's... It looks like there is a cone 10 one. A DX. Nice. It's the. It looks like it's the same size. Cone 10, 120 volt, Genesis controller, half a cubic foot. Nice. Oh, hold on, hold on. It's. I just saw a note. It said, should not be used for high production more than once a week to their maximum temperature. The element life will not be acceptable under those conditions. 208 volt and 240 volt versions are rated to cone 10 under high production conditions. So, but if you're just using it for bisque, yeah, there's some options out there for sure. And I mean, like, that's really something you should think about if you can, because if you don't want to drive back and forth, if you can, like, build up all your inventory in bisque and, like, get it to that, take all your stuff glazed yeah that's really that would be amazing right yeah that's a good situation right there yeah let's say i mean gas alone especially in california would it would add up over time yeah 100 percent. sweet all right an hour in yeah and i've got 35 percent left on my battery okay i mean you can charge it if you need to correct no no (laughs) no (laughs) all right well let's go what are we talking about today (laughs) so we were talking about uh we this conversation came up at ryan's house we were talking about my fidget stones my fidget um the fidget stones they are tumbled in a rock tumbler and um, that's the majority of the time spent is tumbled. So, um, we were, and I sell them for $10 and Ryan doesn't think that's enough, uh, for the amount of quote unquote work that is put into it. So what our question really is, is, is it, does it, is the passive, says, how do you, how do you price something that requires additional hands-off time is what we call yeah. it. Yeah. But not necessarily more work for you. Yeah. So is price 
more variable in that situation should you consider it a little differently because of uh, different things that you have to wait on, even though it's not you doing something necessarily. Yeah. So your fidget zones were the topic of conversation. Uh, I don't have a 10... Well, my comparable item would be a shot glass that would be $10. Yes. And I was like, Becca, your fidget stone has more value than my shot glass. Well, it depends That's on if you're an different. alcoholic or not, actually. But, um... <laughs> if you're an alcoholic, I don't think you care to drink it out of a fancy shot glass. <laughs> but... You're drinking that shit right from the bottle, or you're pouring it in a plastic cup. Uh... Yeah, so so we'll just let's just go over the timeline for the fidget stone so people can kind of like see where we're and then starting. And I can go over my timeline for a shot glass. Yes. Um keep in mind that this is still like to be tested if that makes any sense. Like it's not set in stone for the fidget stones because they're a new product and uh I haven't been making them forever. So mm -hmm. Okay, so I squish out the stones uh, out of my little uh, extruder, and then I squish them onto no. a board. No, what do you have to... You have to prep the clay first and get it in the extruder, right? Yeah, I just make a log and put it into the okay. extruder. And then I squish it out, and then I um, cut them up, and then I squish them down onto a board. And I would say... If I, if you gave me an hour, I could probably make a hundred of them. Maybe more. Okay, so a, mi a minute a piece. Oh, sorry. That, sorry, that would be 60. Yeah. 30 seconds a piece? Yeah. Easy. Yeah. You're talking about to just get them to a bone, wear, bone dry state. Maybe less, honestly. Like 10 to 15 less. seconds a piece. That's not true. You have to spend the time. You got to count the loading the thing, pushing it out, cutting it up, squishing it. You're saying each one of those seconds added up is 10 seconds a piece? Okay, we'll say 20 seconds a piece. 25. Okay. I know we're getting super granular here with like <laughs> but you can't say that that's zero time, you know what I'm right, saying? Right. Like we'll say And then how many how many are you getting out of one extrusion? Is that 101 extrusion? Or no. do you have to reload it a couple times? I think it's probably like uh, 35, 40 out of one extrusion. Okay. Maybe 50. Um, and then... Um, and this also matters if I'm at home, like in my studio or not, because... If I'm in my studio, I'm more likely to just throw them in the the uh, slab roller and do them all at once with a piece of paper. Um, Is that more efficient? Yeah. Yeah? It's just as efficient, I would say. Um, I don't know for sure. Anyway. Okay, we're doing it by hand, though. So then they dry, and then once they're dry, I bisque them. And once they're bisked, I put them in a rock tumbler. And I can fit probably... And you're just kind of tossing those in a bisque kiln. They're, I mean, they could break, but you're... Yeah. Pl you're putting them in a bowl or something, and then you're putting the bowl in the kiln. It's not a lot of individual moving... Right. And then um, I put them in a rock tumbler. Now, the rock tumbler, I would say I've put 30 in. Maybe 20? No, not 20. 30. 30. And each and you're time... you're limited because you have other items in the rock tumbler with it? No, just they're a little bit big. So the rock tumbler is small. But do you have other things with them, or are they just grinding on themselves with water? They're grinding on themselves with water. Okay. I know some of them have, like, pebbles and stuff you put in there. Yeah, I I've taken the pebbles out. I don't think it matters. Um, and then they tumble for one day. Okay. So like, Does that depend on the clay you use, or no, is it all the same? It's all the same. So they tumble for like 24 hours, and then after that 24 hours, I dry them out, and then I put them in the glaze fire. 
Okay. You do have to... Do you, can you still pile those in there in a glaze fire? Yeah. Okay. So, and then I fire them, and then I take them out again, and then I put them back into a rock tumbler. Now, they're smaller this time, so I can fit more in the rock tumbler. Um, probably like 40 in the rock tumbler. And then... I have to do a medium grit and then I do a fine grit. So the medium grit, probably a day, and then the fine grit. What does that mean? You toss something else in there with it? Yeah, like grit. So it's like a sandy material. Um, okay. So the medium grit and then the fine grit, and I would say that's two days of tumbling. Okay. Does the grit, like, yeah. Stay, stay? Does it stay solid or does it just get finer and finer it gets, the more you use it? It gets finer and finer and gloopier. Yeah. Okay. So you have to get more grit and stuff sometimes? Yeah, but it's I've got huge jars and they're not it's not expensive. Oh, okay. So, um okay. I would say we're still testing this obviously, but I'm going to go with uh 2 days. 2 days? What do you mean? Of tumbling. Start to finish. Yeah. Oh, two days of tumbling. Yeah. And then once they're done tumbling, I take them out and then I dot them and then bisque them again. You dot them. Okay. How long does it take to dot? A hundred of them. Let's say you have that same hundred that you did in an hour. How long would it take you to dot a hundred of those? I did like, Maybe you're not dotting them all in one setting, but... I did like 40 yesterday, and it took me like 20 minutes. Okay, so 20... So like 30 40, seconds a piece. 50 minutes. 50 minutes. It takes me 30 seconds a piece. Okay. Tops. 30 seconds times 100. 50 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then they go back in the kiln, the glaze kiln. It honestly, honestly seems even less than you're that. Gonna it's say, so you're fast gonna say to dot less. them. It's so fast to dot them. Hold on. But you have ADD, Becca. I know. I know. Hold on. I took a video yesterday. <laughs> I want to count. You're saying you're saying thirty seconds. I'm saying you're saying fifty minutes. I'm saying give it sixty minutes. Like just. Um, I feel I saw like... you dotting them, but the, it was sped up a little bit. I, I think, just want but... to count how many are on this board. Hold on. Okay. And then you've got the time to load your load your air pin up. I'm sure there's some swapping things out or whatever. Obviously, I'm getting super granular. You don't... I mean, it is all part of the process. Okay. Like it's part of the time spent. So it's 25. It took me nine minutes to arrange and dot 25. So okay. we'll say 10 minutes for change, 25. Change so for 100, it'd be you like... you to clean it out and change colors or something? Yeah, so 100 would be like 40 minutes just the dotting, and to add the glaze, it would probably be like 50 minutes tops. Okay. And then you do have to load those in the kiln. Yes. Do you... load? Do you when, you're, when you're doing them, are you doing them on a shelf so you can just take that shelf and just put it right in the kiln? Yeah. I don't... Yeah, I dot them right on the shelf. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so you put them in there and you bisque fire them to get them to that temperature so the stroke and coats settle. Yeah. And keep in mind, these and firings are four hours. They're four-hour firings. So... Okay. So it's not like I'm waiting an entire day. Like, I could put them in the morning i mean a firing is a firing regardless of, i mean if it's four hours you're not you can't take it out four hours later i can't you still have to wait i can take it out four hours later it goes up and it goes down and you can touch it and unload it four hours after you start it i can i can load it in the morning and take it out at night okay and then you're starting another one or i can if i want to <laughs> yeah if i start it if i start it at midnight and leave It'll be cool by the next time I come in the morning. Like, it'll be 70 degrees. Wow. Yeah. And it's not even vented or anything. It's just... No. That's just natural. It just goes up and down that quick. It's wow. tiny. <laughs> it's tiny.
it's got and I'm sure with those eyes. you can open <laughs> you can open it up and kind of let it cool quicker too uh no I I haven't to. done that but it literally takes no time at all to cool it okay Okay. Okay. That sounds like a lot of steps. It's a lot of steps, but not a lot of work for each step. Let, let's let say you had... Okay, let me... I guess I can go to my shot glasses that are the same price. And let's also, let's also not discount the fact that it is... Like, your shot glasses take up a lot more space than my little fidget stones. What do you mean space? Like to store. Kiln space or you're talking about both in on the shelf? Yeah, both kiln space and all the other space. Why do I care about space though? Well, I care about space. <laughs> well, that's your problem. That's not my problem. <laughs> well, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, continue. Let's talk about your <laughs> shot glasses. Okay, shot glasses. I did a minute of clay prep, which would just be taking the five pound ball or whatever that's reclaim and just wedging it. That whatever. That Erica wedges for you. No, she doesn't wedge the reclaim. Oh, okay, never I mind. I wedge then. the reclaim. Because <laughs> I'm the one that sets it out and like checks on it and all that stuff. Yeah. Um. Because I pretty much only use reclaim for that. Okay. Uh, clay prep. Uh, throwing it on the wheel. I considered it 45 seconds per item to throw okay cut it off set it on the board and then the next day when it's ready to clean up i, I did about a minute maybe it's closer to like 45 seconds thumb it off stamp it set it okay so dry it out stack them whatever and then load them in and out of the kiln i don't know maybe that's since I stack them up, maybe that's 15 seconds a piece. Okay, out of the kiln. Okay, maybe 30 seconds, I guess, if you include the unload. Okay, and then waxing. All, I wax all of them. Okay. When they're bisque fired. Or and he does the hot wax. Hot wax, yeah. So I, I put about 15 seconds a piece, maybe, just to be conservative. 10 seconds a piece? I don't know. Yeah, 15. We'll say 15. Just because you're... Just because you're moving them around on the shelves and shit. Um, okay, and then glaze. We'll say, we'll say sixty seconds to be a minute each. Uh, yeah. And then loading them in the glaze kiln. Let's say, fifteen seconds. Yeah, I think that's honestly, that that um is a big difference too, right? Like loading. You can just throw yours in. Right. I mean like Well, the glaze can't, you can't because you got to place them. But, but while I'm play I can place them really quickly though and then glaze them, you know? I don't have to worry mm -hmm. about like setting them down or wiping the bottoms or, you know, stuff like that. That is a difference, but I think the biggest thing is like does that day between making stuff doesn't matter like the day of it tumbling doesn't matter and does that cost money like obviously it costs money but technically for me it doesn't cost me money because my electrical is included in my studio rent so it doesn't cost me any extra money to run the tumblers a hundred percent of the time and if I'm always working on a new set of fidget stones does that time like time spent tumbling does it matter so I calculated mine to be about 3 minutes and 45 seconds per piece okay start to finish and then I I don't know what to do with the 1 minute of clay prep time for the lump that's probably a Maybe I could say the seconds of throwing is a little bit more, but... Yeah. So, three minutes and 45 seconds. Okay. And they're 10 bucks a piece. How much did you calculate mine to? I didn't calculate yours. That's your job. 
Well, bitch, I th- you were writing things down. I thought you were... I was writing my shit down. Fuck you! <laughs> I did not know this was the plan. It wasn't the plan, but mm-hmm. I thought you were keeping a mental note of all the... I wasn't doing it down to the seconds. I mean, uh, you're saying the numbers of how many you could do, but... Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll do it. Okay, so it was... Hey, do you got a little calculator? I can say it to you. I mean, you can call it out. What is the... Okay. What's the clay prep time to get it in the gun and the extrusion? 25 seconds. And then we'll call all of the adding to the tumbler and you all those things. You can prep it and extrude all of it in 25 seconds? 25 seconds each. Each, okay. Okay, and then we'll call adding it to the tumblers and stuff like that. We'll say that that's like a minute each, I guess. <laughs> um. So that's a add... What about the low? You're already to the bisque stage. Are you not counting any of the time to put it in and out of the kiln or anything like that? I added or that to a, shelf, a minute. Moving them on the shelf. I'm like, I'm combining all of the kiln and loading into said rock tumbler into a minute because it probably takes me like ten seconds each time, like super fast. Okay. And okay, and then what's next? Um, glazing them. And adding them to the board, we said 30 seconds. Okay. And then what? That's it. Unloading them, and that's it? Yeah. What is that? Unloading them, you just take them out and plop them onto a desk. (laughs) So, five seconds? Five seconds. It's all of the time that's like tumbling you know that's the time okay so yours is about two minutes two minutes okay two minutes mine's three minutes and 45 seconds okay but like most of mine is not me touching it at all okay does that matter with the cost how long would it take you? This was the next thing that I was thinking of. Based on the current options that you have, the equipment that you have, how long would it take you to take a hundred from soft clay to finished? Given that you have your small kiln. Probably eight days. Eight days. Okay. And can you think through how you how did you calculate that in your head? Uh. Yes. Um. The day that I make them, I would put them in the kiln that night. I'd pull them out, and then I would do. So that's making them and bisking them the same day. Ba- you can fit all hundred in one kiln. Oh, easy. Yeah. Okay. And then I would start doing um, sections for, like, I would. You have to. I would glaze, fire, glaze, fire, glaze, fire. Right. I would tumble, tumble, glaze, or tumble, fire, glaze, tumble. Like, I would have to go back and forth and back and forth. Um, I will. But how do you tumble? Well, I guess you said you can tumble 30 or so, so you, you'd you only lose time in that middle section right after you fire it the first time. Right, you'd yeah. Tumble 30 or so. Right, like I'm doing that right now, quite literally right now. Like I've already tumbled three sets of the stuff that I fired at your house, and, mm-hmm. I've alre- and I'm, I'll be tumbling the glaze set tomorrow. But I actually plan on going to Harbor Freight and getting the double tumbler. Because I've wanted one for a really okay. long time, and I feel like finally it's worth it. <laughs> so it's like one day tumble, and then for that day of tumble, you have enough to glaze, what, two kiln loads? Yeah. I think, I, no, I could do, no, one day of tumble I could glaze um, in a full kiln. One kiln. So one tumble for one glaze. Yeah. Okay. So within that single... Because you have to stagger it, so you... 
make one day, the next day, tumble, 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 tumble. <laughs> next day, glaze while you're tumbling another batch. And then you got to repeat that. Yeah. For, f- what, four firings? Yeah. So, but. Okay. So it would probably take like eight days to do 100. Right? But that's okay. just with one tumbler. If I had the three tumblers, which I'm going to go get probably tomorrow. Well, we were just going about what you currently have. Right. But when I currently have tomorrow, and by the time this comes out, will be three tumblers. Okay. And what would that day cycle be? I could probably get like 100 done in like five days. Five days. Okay. Maybe less. Okay. Well, yeah, that's where the variable was of you figuring out where yeah. the tumbling equilibrium is of, for one, you found out tumbling at bisque shaves off time. Yeah, lots of time. Versus glaze. Lots of time. And that's just because the clay is just less hardened and less... Yeah. Yeah, it's got like a lot it's, more... It's more conducive it to can sanding. Move. And what's cool is that, like, I don't have to worry about how they look when I smush them down. Because once I put them in the, the bisque tumble, it, like, makes them all look like little pebbles. Like, perfect little pebbles. And when I was mm-hmm. when I was tumbling them when they were solid, like, when they were vitrified, it would take, like, five days for them to get, like, to a point that even resembled that. And they'd all be a little bit different. So. Yeah. They look a lot better now. But we, like, I have your clay this time, which is a little grittier, so we don't even, I don't even know how long it's going to take to tumble, because your clay's grittier. See, that's what I was wondering. You said it was a day to tumble, but I wonder with the speckled, if it's going to be the same, or if you're going to need to add half a day to it. Right. We don't know, but, um, I can report back. But anyway, back to the original question. Do you think I should charge more because I'm tumbling them? And well, I don't think that's the f- full reason you price something the way you price it, but just with all the steps you explained, like, mine sounds way, I don't know, maybe mine's not way easier. I think... Th- it just sounds like you're more limited by time than I am. Maybe, yeah. I think that, for me, it seems it's really easy, and it's also, like, not my only... Um, it's not my only thing I'm doing. Just like your... So you're context switching a lot. Yeah. So, like, while it's tumbling, I'm doing other stuff that's still making me money, you know? And, like, as opposed to, you know, how it's like some people sand by hand. Like, my cups I sand by hand. And, like, that is all happening without my hands doing anything, you know? Does the... Because you know that the tumbler is working, does that give you more of a reason to not work? No. In that time? Okay. That all, I mean, like, it do- totally depends. Like, right? Like, if I, if I make all of my money from fidget stones, absolutely. fucking But, <laughs> but I don't. Yeah. I'd say <laughs> that, that, does it mentally register in, in your brain at all that you're like, oh, well, I'm throwing that on the tumbler. Something's getting done right now. No. So I can relax for an hour or two. No, it's like, hey, that's great. I'm throwing them in the tumbler. I can go do other stuff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that never really crosses my mind, especially... Okay. Like when I do the earrings, because I can throw the earrings in with the fidget stones, which is nice. But the earrings only tumble for six hours. Um, it's always like, ah, I got to tumble these for six hours and then kind of get back to it. And Yeah, it'll be nice to have three tumblers for sure, because I can have just one that's for earrings and it's timed. Okay. I was trying to calculate the days if I had to work at quick as possible to get 100 shot glasses done. And I think mine, if it was as fast as possible, would be like, I mean, the kiln would not be full, but it would be like five days probably. Right, right, right. If you had like five and a half. If you had a kiln that fit all of your 100 shot glasses, like perfectly. Yeah, 
Which I do, but if I was in your situation, it would probably be closer to like... It'd be like two weeks, probably. Yeah. But, um... I just feel like there's... How much are you factoring in the work involved in making them with the price versus what it is that how many fidget stones do you see out there that are clay? Like who are you competing with and what function does this serve? What purpose is it versus a shot glass? I, I think that should the, the, uh, unique factor and the like niche factor. Fuck. I was going to sell them for $5 originally. I was, <laughs> and then, like, when I did them, I was like, oh, my God, this hurts my hand so fucking much. And so I was like, I'm selling them for 10 And they sold fine. I mean, fine. you had to buy a specialty tool partially because of that, right? Yeah. But, I mean, they help with... You didn't have to, but... And it helps you... literally everything else that I do. But, um... But, yeah. Would you make them if you did not have the air pin? No. I would not. 100% no. Why? Because I, my hand would die. <laughs> are you li are you limited on it? Like, if you had to do 100 of those glazing in a day, would that kill you? Like, would your hand be dead? My, or is that my a, hand or would hurt. Cap? My hand would hurt. I did... Well, just with the air pin, like, can you do 100 in a day? No, that's what I'm telling you. Like, I did 50 yesterday, and my hand hurt. It didn't hurt a lot, okay. but it, I could tell it was, like, starting to... Um, starting to go numb. Now... Uh, like it definitely does not hurt. It just kind of like felt a little bit numb. Um, and also I'm considering if I can put like a piece of tape over it and have it be like the right, you know, air block. Actually block it. Or yeah. Something? To see if that works. Um, mm -hmm. cause I think that, I think that if I held a pen for an hour my hand would hurt you know like it doesn't matter yeah. what i'm holding um but yeah no definitely would not ever make them if i didn't have an air pen i wouldn't even make the dots on the back of my cups if i didn't have an air pen now um so like the air pen is essential to what i'm doing um but yeah i feel like it and i was i was talking to you about it cuz i was wondering uh, when we were talking about the tumbling, I was like, how much do you think that the softness helps sell it versus the dot action? I thought the dots were like a 60, 40, like the dots were more important to me than the softness, the softness. of the tumble. Yeah. I maybe 70, 30 dots over tumble, but when people pick it up, people are like, Oh, I love that. This is soft on one side and bumpy on the other. Like, I think that it serves two purposes for people. Mm -hmm. And I think that the softness is extremely important. Um, as somebody that has like sensory issues, I think it's really important because like if it was bumpy and there was, if it was not soft, if it was scritchy, scritchy, and there mm -hmm. was bumps on it, me as like a neurodivergent person wouldn't touch it. <laughs> yeah. I'd be like... Would you ever sell them as just soft? I might. No dots? That'd be real easy. How much would you sell that for? Seven dollars. Because you don't have the bisque fired anymore, right? No. Would you tumble it? You already tumble it twice, right? Or you don't? You tumble it once? You tumble it twice. Do you still tumble yours twice right now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you still tumble it twice. I mean, like, it is nice to only tumble them once. Like, it would be nice to just, like, pull them out of the, you know, pull, like, do a once fire and then throw them in the tumbler. Like, I actually don't know which takes less time, but, like the result is so much better they look so much better when they're tumbled at bisque the thing is you could totally test it when you get the second tumbler right. like you can test them I could. side by side and just be like this was a five hour one this was an eight hour one yeah how do they compare yeah totally i'm, I'm stoked about that 
Um, and then you could be like, okay, well, I know this clay I can do for 75% of the time of this clay. Right. So you shave off time here and there. Right. And, like, that's what was nice about the um, – I have no idea if this is going to be an interesting episode at all. It sounds kind of boring to me. But, I like, maybe somebody will <laughs> think it's interesting. But um, the but what was nice about the earrings is that it is exactly six hours is, like, perfection on how I want them to feel, you know? And so I have a fucking plug that has a timer in it. I just hit six hours and it goes for six hours and I don't even have to worry about it. Um, so it would be nice Mm -hmm. to see if like a six hour session is enough. You know, when they're tumbling rocks, it's like a week. Like they just set it and forget it, you know? You were talking about you did it for three days at one point in the past and I'm like... You spent three days tumbling that thing? I didn't spend like three times, three days. I put it in the garage and walked away and did other things. I get it, but it's it, it was running for three days. I'm like, wow. Yeah. That's a long time for 30 stones. It was probably At that more point, than I 30. think you are, the value is part of the situation there where like you have to price it because you're limited based on you have to run it for three days if that yeah. was the true gauge yeah and i mean like i have or i used to have like this huge rock tumbler i think it's actually at rebecca's and it would hold it would probably hold like a hundred at a time but it stopped working for some reason and i don't know why and that would be really nice to have like a big rock tumbler but they cost so Mm -hmm. much money so hmm so are you considering wholesaling them at all does the wholesale price factor in with that ten dollars that would you be happy with five dollars each for them i think i would um i'm i'm also considering consigning them because they're such an easy consignment it's like just send them a bowl you don't have to worry about it you know Mm -hmm. you've got 50 here right you know they're easy checkout purchases probably right so i actually talked to um queen city clay they're gonna he said he'd be interested oh, in some, yeah. And I talked to to Link, and Link said she'd do it. And wow, there you go. So, yeah, I would really like to make all my money from fidget stones. I wouldn't hate that. And I mean, and I was, I, I don't know if I came up with the idea or we just tossed it around, but I was like, can you go to like a psychiatrist or somebody that yeah. does with mental, like the neurodivergent people? Like, is there a way to get in with people that? Yeah would resonate from something like that that do like art therapy or whatever yeah where they would have an appreciation for that and i talked to chris birch too and he said he'd sell them too so like there you go and he gave me he gave me some names in in which to look like a website and then i could just like contact people i'm sure you could give some to isaac shu i'm sure he wouldn't mind i don't know i don't know i think so I don't know, Maybe. Isaac. I don't know. Maybe we're Who knows? putting that idea in his mind <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> he probably did. But yeah, I think that the... Uh, see, that's what I think the uniqueness of it. I, I, that's why I'm just like... Maybe it's just because I'm so dulled to the shot glasses because I've been making them so long or whatever. Yeah. Or shot glasses are a dime a dozen. That I'm like, there's no way the shot glass has more value to somebody than a fidget stone. Right. I think that, well, it also matters in the sense of people lose it, you know? Like, I haven't sold a lot. Like, I have sold a lot, but the ones that I haven't were because, oh, I'd probably just lose that, you know? But they get way more value. They could get 10 minutes of value just finding it and using it for a day. Like I know. I know that. $10 is the cost of, like, two coffees, right? Yeah. You're telling me that they don't have enough value out of those two coffees they drank? I know. I don't know if we said anything last week, but the reason this is such a big issue, or not issue, but a a hot topic for us right now is because I passed, like, probably, probably, like, a hundred out. I don't know how many you had. I had a... I I thought you had more, like, 50. Maybe 50. I had a full Ziploc bag of them, and they were small. Um, I'm making them much larger now so that people can find them easier, but... um, they were like tiny and I ha- I just started handing them out to people at, at Ensika and it was a giant hit. So like 
It was a very yeah. affirming. I mean, you're giving them away for free. Yeah. Who's going to turn that away? Right. And it, well, Danny Meisiger, but, um, <laughs> Okay, one out of a hundred people, he, whatever. He turned it away because he was like, I'm going to get distracted when I'm talking. <laughs> That's the point. Yeah. <laughs> it was so funny. But, um, yeah, and and people were just like, even like Kurt and everybody I gave him to, they're like, we were rubbing this all freaking, all the whole. I think it's like, it's like a subtle marketing thing. Yeah. That you're you're in people's minds and they can't forget about it. Yeah. Unless they lose it, but like, I almost think if somebody buys a fancy cup from you online, you should ship them a fidget stone with it for free. I will. I will now. From now on, and yeah. It's just like a little extra, and they can get. I mean, hopefully they don't lose it in the box or whatever, but you know they can get a feel for it, and they're like, "Oh my god, I love this! I want to buy some." And then yeah. you've got them on your site, and then you've got them at shops here and there, and like they're easy to ship. They are easy to ship, and, and I also, I've been selling them on Etsy, and this is a point of, uh, like, weirdness for me right now, because I sell them on Etsy for $10, but I ship them for free, and typically, I, ca I bank on somebody buying one and something else, so that when I ship it, it makes sense. You know, I don't really count on them Have you sh buying one. Buying one by itself. Yeah, but it has happened a few times. And then I'm like, well, it's okay. I'm still making money because it's like still $7. Um, and then Etsy takes their cut, so you're making like $6. So it's like wholesale. It's like 5 But I eventually I'll raise it up a little bit. I think I had it at 13 and they were selling. But I, I figured for... Um, for now, I'll ha I'll still have them at ten, just to maybe eleven, eleven fifty or something like that, just so that um they get a little bit more traction. But they've been getting really good traction on Etsy. Like I I've been like selling actually on Etsy. I just shipped out seven packages yesterday, and I just got three orders today. I feel I'm elated. I'm. That's great. I'm. I didn't see. I know you were shipping the mystery box. And the uh, earrings, but I didn't know you were shipping fidget stones. Yeah. Very much. Yeah, and um, the fidget stones is what, like, caught off on Etsy, and, like, people were like, oh, and because Andrew, like, went through my whole description and was like, autistic, neurodivergent, like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and so, yeah. I mean, like, they're great for kids. Like, yeah. my mom got them from you, and she put them in each of our Christmas stockings. So I think the yeah. kids got ones, too. Yeah. And, uh... I don't know. I just feel like it's it's more valuable than ten dollars to me. I don't know. I I just can't settle on ten and like make it doesn't make sense to me. Like all these different things that you're talking about. Yeah. Like there's potential for you to make like a thousand of them, and I feel like you could sell a thousand of them in a year, and that wouldn't be unreasonable. I agree. Would you be scared with a thousand? Like if you had to make a thousand, if a if a business was like, I want three hundred of them. Make me three hundred. Would you be happy with five dollars a piece if you made three hundred of them? Hell yeah. Like, I, that's what I, I was trying to say. Like, hey Becca, you should price them at like fifteen bucks or twelve. Like, I feel like a minimum like twelve. I don't know. Twelve, thirteen, something in there. Yeah, I might get to that. I don't. I want to do a little research and see how people like them. I mean, I th I think you can get some good karma out there if you just give them to a bunch of people that are in the right spots. I 100% plan on it. That's why I just made all those ones that were black because I'm going to send them out to little um, stores. And I finished my line sheet, and so I'm going to print off a little QR code and write them a note and say, Hi, my name's Becca, and I sell these fidget stones. And I'll probably sell send, like, a little earrings in there, too, and be like, My name's Becca. I make these fidget stones. Here's my line sheet. Like, I'd love for you to sell them. I mean, and I'll make you a little... I yeah. also am going to... Part of the marketing for these two is I want to make a little bowl for them. That I can... Like, the first order comes with a bowl. You know? Oh, a display bowl? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the one negative is... They're not easily searchable so the people that get them don't necessarily know where they came from right 
Yeah, and that and which makes it a little more difficult. But and somebody I, was I like, know. "How would Maybe you do there's... that? Could you like stamp them?" And like on the back with like my name on it, and I'm like, I don't fucking know. Like, could I put them? Could I do like one of those sharp, like you know, a, an actual stamp, and put it in the oven, bake it in the oven, and it sounds like too much time. Yeah, I like, feel like the stamp, it's like a stamp, like I have, like a subtle stamp, like I have, that's ser- easily searchable, easily Google Googleable, and it maybe it finds it gets to your Etsy somehow. But, like, stamping each of them takes, like, so much more time, you know? And I'm tumbling them in the rock tumbler, so it's, like... So you just got to work harder to get them marketed to people and get them in the right shops so that you can just make and make and make and deliver to shops and let them sell them. Right, exactly. Like, I don't think it's going to be something that people are going to be able to find, you know? So... I mean, and then at some point it could be worth the time for you to stamp all those because it breeds the marketing and you can just yeah coast on the familiarity and people finding you through some random shop that they got in in West Virginia or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I was thinking like maybe if I stamped like the side, <laughs> I don't even know. I don't know how I would, I would sign them or stamp them so that it wouldn't affect the purpose of them you know yeah i don't know unless you know i could is there is there some dots that you you can always use three dots in a certain pattern or something that's significant that is recognizable that's three colors specific color that's not the same color as the thing and i don't know well you know i could what i could do i suppose is oh what if you did five lines on them and then you put dots around it or something? No, 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 no. What if I, what if I got like, what if for each of them I got like a little um, glue dot and just glue dotted my uh, business card to the back, and so you could still feel the front. The the regular business card that you have, or whatever, or even if I had something tiny, like a tiny little, a little tiny one inch sticker. And not a sticker, but yeah, like yeah, yeah. like a like a clear like a clear sticker. Yeah, and just it's really thin, and it says five lines on it or something. Yeah, and like, they could take it off. Or a QR code or something like that. Yeah, I like that idea. I mean, that would probably be worth putting them on the bottoms of all of them. You know. Yeah. Um, I could also put it on the bowl that it's selling out of. You know. Mhm. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, I just I mean it could be so, I mean it sounds crazy but I like there's a business in just the fidget stones. Like I can see the potential. I do I can too. There is a business in the fidget stones. And like I think you like struck gold here. You just got to get into the right spaces with the the right people. Yeah. That it works with. And uh, some of that's just getting it in their hands, and then they're like, "Okay, like, what's the risk here?" You know how I, you know. And I mean, like, I, I don't know. I don't see how people would not like understand it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and even if it's like, and it's such an easy consignment situation too. So if if it's like, there is no risk. If I'm like, hey, we could consign them. I'll take 60%, you take 40. I'll take 70%, you take 30. Something like that, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I see a lot of cold emails in your future. I'm going to just send cold mail. I'm going to find... I'm just going to mail them to people. There you go. Just send it to shops that you think it would look good in. Yeah. I've been planning on ask, asking on my Instagram if people have local shops to them that have like little knickknacks or little uh, toy toy shops, you know, like game stores. Mm-hmm. They'd be perfect in a game shop, like a board game shop, because everybody that plays board games are, are weirdos like us. Woodburn Games here in Cincinnati. Yeah. There's one right up the street for me. Monster Games, I think is what it's called. Yeah. So good. 
Yeah, I feel like those would definitely... I mean, they're a little artsy, but I feel like they'd be in the right spot. And that... It, like, for them, it t takes no real estate. It takes a counter space. So, like, you can have the smallest shop. Yeah. But all it needs is a little bitty counter. Yeah. To put them on. For sure. That's it. 100%. Yeah. I'll give you a list of some places. Thanks. I'm working on it. It's one of those things where I want to, like, do it right. I'm thinking about, like, just having... I want to have, like, just a write-up on the fidget stones. Because I have my line sheet, but the fidget stones aren't really, like, highlighted. It's mostly the jewelry. I need to have, like, the fidget stone has its own line sheet. It's its own story. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like it... And you don't have to get all, like... Ooh, about no. it. Like, fidget stones are proved to blah, 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 blah. This is for people that have X, Y, Z. And when they have something like this, it helps them reduce their stress and get all like. No, it's you know just like, I mean? hey, these are really great to fidget with. <laughs> like, straight up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think the, the simplicity will speak for itself. And the. Yeah. You know, you could get all fancy pantsy on it but uh i don't know feel too markety if it's too much of that you know yeah for sure i can't wait to do some okay. in obsidian oh man yeah i mean the cl and it hopefully hopefully the places are cool and they're just like give me 50 of whatever you know Oh, um, I'm not then, gonna, I'm, I said on my, uh, wholesale that, uh, it's either artist choice or one color. <laughs> like, I, yeah, I will. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm not fucking doing that. I'm not doing 15 of this color, 15 of that color. No, thank you. We're. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, nobody really cares the color. They cares how it feels. Yeah. I mean, maybe if they're giving it to a kid or something, yeah. they're like, uh, the orange one is Johnny's and the blue one is Sally's. Yeah. Yeah. So they're not fighting over who's is who's and shit. Yep. <laughs> okay. I'm like writing shop names down here. <laughs> we should probably yeah, go I mean, soon. <laughs> man such a good idea okay regardless i think you'll i don't know i just feel like they're naturally going to go up in price and i think so maybe i'm maybe i'm pushing you too but also you do the same for me of like pushing me on price for certain things no so you're right like... you're right you're right and i i'm like feeling it out i'm feeling out the the market a bit yeah cuz i know ultimately you're looking for less work, more profit. Yeah. And uh, especially with, if you're going to wholesale them, like, you know, a dollar each difference is going to add up for sure. Yeah. For sure. So. Yep. Okay. Sweet. Hopefully this was helpful for people. I don't know if it was or not, but. But. Um, they can all be winners. <laughs> I mean, I was trying to. I, when we initially talked about it, I was also relating it to like slip casting and stuff yeah. where you're limited based on the time of things to dry so that you can ink, like do the next step. Yeah. And that's its own thing. I almost want to talk to a slip caster like Kurt or somebody about that and whether that factors into how they price some items and limitations of that. But yeah, um, yeah I'm sure there's other similar similar tasks that are. But I feel like somebody listening to how you talked through all those steps are like, that sounds like way more than $10. Just in th like spending that effort to do all that stuff. I get right. It. And then, it's... and then like, but then when you're in my shoes and I have a, a rock tumbler going 24 seven and it's just my normal, it's just normal. You know, it's not any work for me. It's just like. Oh, I have to. As long as it's not throwing you off, that it's like, okay, I got an alarm now. I got to stop, clean my hands. I got to go make sure that no. I'm around so I could swap the tumbler over. 
like switch the things out, yeah, clean it out, like as long it sounds as, like nothing, but it as long as could. I have all the right materials, which I actually need to bring up my box from in here. As long as I have all the right materials, it's a piece of cake. It's like, oh, change out the rock tumbler. Okay, wash them off. On to the next, mm -hmm. you know. I would suppose you. There's also options to have sep several rock tumbler containers. Yeah. So you like take the one off and just put the other one on, and then you oh. clean it whenever you need to. It's easier just to clean it right away. Oh, okay, you just dump it all out. I just dump it in a strainer. It. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, it's easy. So. I got a system down. Yeah. All righty. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Thank you. And we will catch you next time. Get some fidget stones if you don't have any. They're on my Etsy. Find somebody to find somebody to gift them to. And yes. your Etsy is just Five Lines Pottery. Is that right? I think so. It's linked in my bio so? in my Instagram. <laughs> okay. Sweet. Sweet. All right. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Yo, yo, yiggity, yo. It's Becca here. Hey, just so you know, thank you for listening. And also, we have... What do we have again? A Patreon. A Patreon. We have a Patreon that you should go and... If you want to donate to, you could donate to it. If you don't, that's cool too. But um, just Google Wheel Talk Podcast Patreon. Don't do the other one. Because uh, there is a Wheel Talk on Patreon, but it's not us. So make sure you get the right one. It's in and the show notes. It's in the show notes. And also, um, leave us a review because they're fun to read. Okay, bye!